welcome to my garden. So today I'm planting clematis and I have a couple of clematis, the two varieties of clematis here that I was going to plant into in my garden. And I thought, what a great time to talk about clematis. Um, and I know there's lots of videos and such about clematis this time of the year, but I thought, you know, it's, it doesn't hurt to talk about them again. So um, I have two varieties and you can see one is called Miss Batman and it has this um, white uh, flower, but I think it has maybe um, a little bit of a pink in it as well. I'm not familiar with them, uh, so but I'm excited about it because um, I've seen them in a, uh, in a catalogs um, and they seem they look really really pretty. I decided that I would like to have them, and I you know and they they had them in our store uh, in our grocery store actually uh, in such a great price, so I just couldn't uh, pass that. And then another variety that I'm going to plant, it's called Pink Champagne. Now this one, I know it's absolutely gorgeous because I had this variety in Colorado, in my Colorado garden, and they've done really, really well for me. Oh, where is the picture? Let me see. Oh, they don't have the picture of Pink Champagne. All right, we'll, we'll uh, place that on a screen so you can see. It has, uh, it's kind of a more of a lavendery, a bluish color with the flame of, um, a raspberry flame in the center of the petals. A really, really beautiful variety. Um, and both of these varieties are group, uh, belong to group two clematis. So the main groups of the clematis, there are three main groups, right? So uh, one is the early blooming clematis, uh, that's the number one group. And then the second group is the large flowering groups that I have. Most of my, most of my clematis are the group two, just because they have really big showy flowers very beautiful. I mean, the flowers can get up to about uh, 10 to 12 centimeters, you know, about five inches, five to six inches, some of them. So they're really, really pretty. And that's what I love the most. So, um, but they do, um, and they all have different types, types of pruning. I do have all three varieties in my garden. So we'll go through all of them. So number one is early blooming. Number two is the large flowers. And number three is, um, uh, clemata that has usually smaller flowers, but they very they bloom a lot and throughout the season they don't really take a break much, um, not as much as the group two. And then um, the prunings are really a little different from one to the other. So uh, number one group, number one group, uh, you have to prune them immediately right after blooming because they set their blooms. Uh, uh, throughout the summer. So if you if you trim them in the spring, then you will lose all your uh, all, most of your flowers. So uh, and they don't really need pr uh, pruning. Uh, usually they uh, they can just be pruned if you wanted to clear out the, their tendrils or the dead parts. And then if you want to contain the size, then you can go ahead and prune uh, and to to, the, to contain the size. But for most part, they don't need pruning. Uh, and if you have to prune again, you have to prune them literally right after they finish blooming. That way you can preserve the blooms that are going to be um, already produced. Um, so number three group is actually the easiest one because they only uh, bloom on a new uh, growth. So the, yes, the last year's growth, you can completely cut them to the ground and we'll go do that because I have I have two clematis that I haven't pruned yet. I left them uh, just so purposely, just so we can prune them together and you guys can see that. So one is the number two group and the other one is number three, we'll prune those together. But for number three group, again, you can just cut them to the ground completely because they are going to come back fresh, come back new, and literally the old or last year's wood is literally done. They're not going to green or, or do anything. And then they just come up fresh and they bloom. It's, it's super easy to take care of them. They're really great. Number two group, however, is, um, I love them. They're so beautiful, large, beautiful flowers. Um, they usually bloom in between, uh, some of them a little early, some of them a little, you know, mid season, but you know, around May, uh, April, May, June, you know, uh, that time, but then they take a break. And then sometimes they also start blooming again, you know, towards the September, I mean, late August, September, you know, in the more, more to the end of the summer. So uh, for the two, uh, second group, they, all, they bloom on old wood 
and new wood. So last year growth would also have uh, produced flowers and new wood also will create flowers. So for most part, for the new, uh, for number two, usually I don't even prune them. Some people like to, like, for example, if you have a smaller trellis and your clematis is, you know, too big for, the, for a trellis, you can always prune them down to contain the size, right? So, but for most part, they all always grow, you know, approximately 200 centimeters, which is about two meters tall. And you can read uh, on the labels. The labels will show, it will tell you how, how long they grow and they will not exceed that. So, and some growers say that after the flowering, you can cut them back in June. Um, you know, that would help them to produce more flowers. I haven't done that. Um, I haven't had any problems with the health of the clematis or anything. So um, I usually just trim them, prune, prune them if I needed to, or I can, I can just uh, try to maneuver them over the chalice and make it the way I wanted them to go, give them the direction, just clear out all the dead parts, you know, all the dead uh, tendrils, and then just let them be there. And then also one very important part about clematis is that they really like to keep their to have their uh, roots in a cool area so they do like the sun but they don't like when their roots get heated so when i plant them i usually either uh, cover them with rocks you can mulch them you can uh, maybe have plants around that that would shade over the roots as long as the roots doesn't heat up the rest of the plant should be should perform and do really really well so um and we'll go around and i'll show you my clematis and again my clematis are have been planted only like two seasons some of them are starting to go some of them are you know still very young clematis also you have to be patient with them you don't ha they don't require a lot of work but they need to have time so sometimes first two sometimes three years they don't really perform much and then suddenly as they start maturing you know it takes a little time for them to really uh, become showy and produce lots of flowers and become really mature so you just need to have patience with them patience with them they will do get there they will do their thing you just need to let them just do their thing and um, so speaking of that my two uh, pink champagne I would like to plant right here see I have a trellis here that I or obelisk here so I wanted to, to bring a little height here. I have a rose, I have Japanese maples around, and I think that this area has enough sun, but also sun usually kind of passes here in the afternoon. So for clematis, they really like to have morning sun, if possible, afternoon shade. So um, in some places, some people are very, um, been very successful growing them in a late afternoon shade. I haven't personally and it's not recommended but you have to see where what works for you in your garden you have to try them and see because it one rule doesn't apply to um to all rules and uh, to everyone and because of the soil uh, and the area that you are in it's just it makes such difference and so you can try and see where they really like to be and that's the important part you don't have to even plant them you can just sit them in the different places and see if they like the sun, if they like the area, they don't wilt. Um, and then you can determine if this is a good spot for them before you permanently plant them into the ground. And so I think this area here is going to be good because uh, I, have sh I have hedges there, which is going to be a little, you know, will bring protection. Um, and they, you know, and it's more of a, it's sunny, but a little bit a little more protected. So I think th this could be good. They do like filtered sun uh, and they, they will still perform really well. So this is where I think my pink champagne is going today. And this is where we're going to plant. I think this is going to be a nice spot. Um, we'll dig that out. So, and then for the Miss Bathman uh, clematis, I have another spot for them, which after we go through uh, all the clematis and do some pruning, I'll show you where the other one, where, where the other two are going. So, uh, let's start right here. I have, uh, so I planted clematis here. This one, oops, let me, I have the labels because I wanted to show you what they look like as well. So you can see. Also, 
Also, I just wanted to let you know, which I forgot to mention, that clematis like to be fed. So usually, some people say, um, you know, they have an opinion to use fertilizer, like a rose fertilizer for the clematis. Some say just a, a balanced fertilizer, which are all three numbers are the same. I don't think you can go wrong with any of them. I've tried many different ones and they all worked really well. However, for uh, just recently, I've started using Proven Winners fertilizer, which I absolutely adore. And I was able to get some of these uh, slow release. And, you know, many of you guys that are in the U.S., you can easily get these uh, from Amazon and other places. These are amazing. And I've been fertilizing with them and they, they've done really, really well for me. So um, also really quick, wanted to tell you something else. Um, so yes, this worked really, really well for me. Also, um, I wanted to let you know that um, there was a company that I used to use uh, when I, from, uh, I used to order from when I used to live in Colorado. Um, they have an online store where you can order clematis from that I had really great success. It's called Brushwood Nursery. Uh, they're online. And I think they're in the southern parts of the color, uh, southern parts of the United States. And I can't remember if they were in um, South Carolina or North Carolina. I'm not sure. But they are specialized in climbing plants. And uh, I've ordered, I think actually my pink champagne came from them. Uh, they they, they uh, shipped uh, very, very healthy plants. Um, I really had great luck with them. So if you are in the U.S., you know, they have a sp uh, special varieties that you can order from. I've had really great success with them. They're very knowledgeable. So anyway, if you're in the U.S., that's a really great source to order from. And of course, your nurseries. But um, just wanted to let you know that. So, all right, let's walk around and I'll show you my clematis here. So I have a few that I've planted here. So one is uh, this clemata here, which I planted la only last spring. And you can see it's coming out really do and doing really, really well. I went and uh, kind of pruned uh, some of the dead parts. Uh, it's a kind of a filtered area here. The sun will come through from here, will come through here. But it, for most part, it's, uh, it's very sheltered. And then you can see I have a bunch of rocks. And then I'm also going to plant uh, something here, which will also protect the roots and keep it cool. So they, uh, they will do really well. And you can see they're very healthy. Now, this one is a, belongs to the group two, large flower clemata. And this is called Kiritekanawa. Uh, and I think this is named after an opera, Japanese opera singer. So it has a double flowers beautiful beautiful variety i love this and it's going to still take some time to mature but you can see they're doing good and i will have blooms already i can tell at least three or four here which is going to be really really pretty i'm very excited and then i wanted to show you another clematis that i've had now this one i've had a really really rough start because i've had um, i've moved it to several places it didn't do well it's been kind of finicky for me, but finally it's doing its thing and it's going. You can see I have several blooms. Um, I might plant something else here with it um, and just kind of uh, make it a little fuller. It seems like it's not wanting to be as full, but I don't know yet because again, it's just starting to take off. So we'll see how it does, but I can see they also, it has a new growth here, although this one is pretty damaged, you can tell. So um, anyway, this one called Veronica's Choice, and I'll show you the picture. It's kind of a purplish, light lilac purplish, and it has a really pretty lavender color with um, kind of a lime and center, limey, yellowish, creamy yellow centers really beautiful oh, actually it's yellow you can see very pretty very pretty variety it's called veronica's choice i love this variety it's really pretty but again just let it do its thing and it will come through and then i have a couple of bush clamata which is another variety that we didn't talk about but there are perennial varieties where they don't get really tall they become like a perennial size I have three of those here, and then I, which called Little Lemon. It's a yellow, it has a beautiful yellow color. And then I have another one of those called Blue, Blue Ribbon, which is up there. But the Little Lemon is here. Now, these guys, you see, uh, they're planted right here. 
it's already uh, coming, uh, starting to sprout. You can see all the new growth it's coming through now these ones will not get any bigger than any taller than 50 centimeters tall like half a meter so it will kind of fill in and just be kind of a bushy like just the small clumps of clematis which is exciting i have three planted here you know before this used to be a border so i thought it would be nice but now since we create changed this bed quite a bit you can see that uh, it, it, it has been extended here. I still need to cover and add more soil and stuff. So which is, you know, coming up hopefully soon. So, OK. And then um, I wanted to show you another variety that I have that it's doing its thing. This one it also this one belongs to group two variety and it's called Peel. It has this beautiful, it has a kind of a fringed edges. You can see it's laven light lavender with a very strong pink centers. And this one, I have two. So it's, I, I planted here. You can see it's doing really good. I need to secure this one here as well. And uh, here is the one. It looks like it's producing a couple of blooms this year. I have two coming out. And then also I have planted another one here last year it was very small um it almost didn't survive in another spot so i went ahead and moved it here it's coming out really good and i was hoping both of them will just kind of climb up on this tree and bring this gorgeous show here oh i, I can't help it but i wanted to show you this gorgeous japanese maple look how tiny this guy is i ordered it was like this little branch when it arrived and now uh it's starting to it's getting bigger i know you guys are looking probably going isn't this big no but it is bigger believe me it was so tiny and uh, it has a gorgeous pink uh, leaves this is a special variety it's called phoenix um super pretty anyway okay so then let's let's just go this way and i'll show you okay here so i have another clematis here that is growing on this side of the arbor now this one called Hugley's Hybrid, I believe, which is this one. It has a just really uh, chiffon kind of, I don't know. I don't know if I'm saying Hugley. this. Huh? Hugley. Hugley. Hugley's Hugley Hybrid. But it has just really pretty uh, pink flowers. If you like, just really clear pink. And it has a little creamy petals but has a beautiful super pink uh, veins that goes through the petals so beautiful so look it's doing really good it wasn't very tiny when i bought it last year and believe it or not i found this in a little they brought them for in during in the spring and i was like oh my goodness it's so pretty so um anyway i have one that i planted here and you can see on a base i have um uh, placed rocks which helps the roots to stay cool in the summer and protect it from the sun as much as possible and it's worked really well for me to doing this but some people don't like the rocks some people like to use mulch or or you can cover them um, with some board or you know something as long as it shelters from the sun it's fine so um, let's go this way I have another uh, another Hagley's hybrid the same uh, same clematis i just showed i have another one right here and it's coming through really well you can see it's doing really really nice i have a climbing rose here that i'm hoping to eventually go but um you know this one is very very nice here coming through coming out and no th this is also group two variety so now here i have several clematis they are group two that are planted. As many of you guys know, if you've been following my videos, I had a bunch of these chicken wires around, which I didn't know what to do because I have these large pine trees. I thought, you know, I can just place them here and have some clematis growing because they create on their own obelisks and uh, I don't have to have too many structures. I already do have them and I love to have more clematis. So here, this is fine. Although this small uh, chicken wire is not as best as like using something like this. Um, uh, if I can get hold of this, this one, I think this works a little better because it has a little larger squares. 
I think they just don't get too, um, in, you know, I don't know, stuck in there. But um, I had so many of that around, so I decided I just want to go ahead and do that. Um, this one is another um, another of that uh, Kirite Kanawa um, Klimata that I planted here. And I thought this would be really pretty because these hybrid roses are orange, has a beautiful orange color. And I thought, you know, the blue will be so pretty, especially since um, if you enter from this arbor to that section, and initially I planted these magnolias, three magnolias, little gems. Uh, they're starting to take off. Uh, hopefully, eventually, you know, I'm hoping to be covered here where you can see that side of the garden and you kind of enter into a new garden room. And then here I have this beautiful clematis that it's going to be very sh with the blue showy flowers with the orange. I think it's going to be really pretty uh, color combination there. So that's the reason why I plant it. This one I planted last year and it's doing really good. I just can't remember the name. I have to look this one up. Um, I'm not sure which variety this one is, but this is, um, it's doing really good. I just planted here last year and it's, look, it's already right here. It's growing, doing really well. Um, I planted one here and it struggled. I'm not sure it's going to come out or not. I'm gonna give some time and see. I don't see anything coming out, it struggled. Uh, struggled um, really badly. I got when I purchased it; it was so tiny, and I think maybe just because it was so small, it didn't make it. This one is a really beautiful variety too. This is um, uh, something de Leon. Can't remember, but I'll I'll place the I'll I'll um, I'll place the name and the picture on the screen. So I think this one though. I'm still struggling to see if this is a group two. Some places say it's a group two, and I can tell you that it is group two because you can see um, it's, the, it's growing on an old wood because this is last year wood. But I'm thinking I might have to go ahead and remove like some of this. I might give a little time, but I don't see any growth here. I left it because you never know. Uh, I'll give a little time. If it doesn't, then I'll just bring, uh, bring this one down to here and uh, help them to maybe this one to uh, help them to to get good strength to take off so then i have another group two again climata that it's planted right here this guy called this guy is doing also really well and healthy uh, this one is a rebecca which is the more of the uh, it's almost raspberry but it's closer to the red we don't have real red I haven't seen at least real red um, climata, but this one is closer. It's pretty dark. It has a bit of a maroon to it, I think, but it's pretty dark. It's going to be really pretty. So you can see it's kind of knit, it being knitting itself uh, through the fence, and I'm hoping to kind of grow. I might plant more here and let some just kind of go over this fence, which would be really pretty. So, okay, that's that. Then, I have another one called, this one is a very pretty one. It's called um, Hyatt. It's H-A-Y-A-T-E, Hyatt, I think, or Hyatt. Um, this one, you can see I still don't have any growth, but it's supposed to be a, a group two. I might have to research this one. This is a new Clemata for me. I planted them not last season, but season before. And I think it did grow on an old wood, but oh, here it's coming out. No, 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 it's coming out. I can see the buds right here. So some, some of them are, you have to let it be for a while because um, some of them are also um, uh, the late, uh, like mid, mid blooming, mid season, because some of them are early, some of them are mid season. So this one might be coming out a little later than the other ones. But, you know, but it, of course you can see the new new growth that is coming out from there. And then also it will start uh, growing from the old wood as well. Now, this one is the one that we have to trim. This one took off for me last. They're all been planted at the same time. And, uh, but this one has been uh, most vigorous of all. This one called Red Star. And I will place the, um, I'll ask George to place the, picture now this one is a beautiful dark fuchsia color and it's double beautiful or semi-double 
very beautiful variety. You can see I have a ton of buds that are coming, that are uh, already formed. And, but this one I need to go ahead and trim. This is the one I left so we can trim them together. So you can see. I don't know how far I want this to go up. I've been kind of trying to take them around, so I don't want to really trim them. Down, I'd like to kind of move them around uh, because eventually I can get to it. So um, anyway, we'll trim this together and you can see how I trim and that's why I left this one untrimmed. Then I have another one. Now this variety is a number one group, uh, Clemata. It belongs to number one group. Now this one, particular one, is this called Armandi Eye Apple Blossom. And they have different ones. They have Armandi Eye um, uh, Snow Drift, I think. Uh, there are several varieties. I do love the Apple Blossom because it has this beautiful kind of uh, outer petal, um, um, almost light plum color to it that I enjoy. It looks like apple blossom a little bit, and I think that's why it's called apple blossom. And I love the fact that this is an evergreen variety because it still keeps the garden uh, full and has, a, you know, stays as a structural for the winter interest as well. So I do love this plant very, very much. And, you know, it, when I planted, it was about here. And you can see how much it has grown. I think they're pretty vigorous growers. Um, you have to have space for them, but uh, they're, they're also early blooming. So they've already, you can see today, we are already in March and they're already in bloom. So, but they also, number one group also blooms only once a year. So they will bloom in this early spring and then they are done for the rest of the year. So uh, that's, uh, and this is why it's so important to prune them literally right after blooming if you don't want to lose your blooms for the coming season so anyway number one group i have another number one group another climata that is a number belongs to number one group that i wanted to show you now these ones are i love it it's very very pretty and it's a alpine climata it has beautiful tulip like flowers they're small they're beautiful and uh I planted this right here. Now this one, you also have to prune right after blooming because uh, again, they form their blooms literally throughout the summer. And if you trim them the following spring, you literally will remove all the, re remove all the flowers. But look how beautiful these guys are. Look at the flowers, they're very delicate. They almost remind me of um, Columbine because I'm from Colorado and uh, we love the columbines our state flower and look at this it, especially when the center opens it does look like like a columbine to me for some reason so i love that anyway um but they are just very delicate and beautiful i planted one here and i'm hoping to just kind of take over and mingle through this uh jasmine um and uh you know early season i'll have this gorgeous beautiful flowers here absolutely adorable so now let me take my pruner and then we'll go ahead and prune that one clemata first that i wanted to prune with you and i'll show you how it's done or how i do it it doesn't mean that's how it's nor everybody does it but that's how i do it and then i also will show you number three group which is let me take that with me Look at this. This is so pretty. There's a tulip coming up. I think this might be Maryland. I don't believe I planted Maryland here because I thought I planted Brisbane variety here, which is a double orange and yellow color. But to me, that looks like Maryland. I'm not sure what we are going to have. I think they're not Brisbane because I can see. Look at this. These are lily like flowers. They're not. Oh my goodness. Okay. You never know what you get. <laughs> so I ordered different things. It must have been mislabeled. It's okay. So um, here I wanted to show you group three climata. So this one that I have, I have actually, I have them in several different places. 
this this is a great conata because you can really plant them anywhere you don't have to worry about it because you in the end of the season you can just cut it down completely and they come out straight from the ground and they will bloom so i use them as a ground cover myself so every one of every single one of them that i've planted in in my garden i i have them as a ground cover in fact i might have to order more of them they're very what they call chlorophyllic pro, pro, prophylic what's the word i can never remember this word anyway they bloom constantly they bloom non-stop and they bloom throughout the season which is really pretty and they have these gorgeous blue flowers that are not super big i'd say maybe i don't know three inches something like that but they um they just bloom all the time so look i planted two here and uh, what i'm hoping to do after these tulips are finished this one this is a um, lantana and i you know i didn't trim them i'm waiting to see if it's alive it's coming back or not before i trim them because sometimes in my area this these guys come back if not i'll just remove them but e even so then i can have th these um uh, climatas that are coming out see it's called hudson river i keep i forgot to tell you the name the Hudson River, beautiful. And what I'm hoping to do is literally cover this entire area, become a, a ground cover, and uh, and bloom this beautiful uh, blue color intermingling with everything else here. So that's kind of what I've done here. Now, here you can see I left one on prunes because I wanted to show you. See, there is two planted here too, the Hudson River, one and two. And I thought this would be really pretty to have just the ground cover um, all over the place so this one has been pruned already but see this one I left them so we can prune them together look at this so this was the last year year's growth this is how far it went now and also just to let you know this um, this uh, clematis or oh, you can see it I've been already forming buds I have several flowers coming out um, that is going to be produced now these ones don't get very tall these guys get about a meter tall so they are perfect they don't get super tall they you know they will make a nice beautiful clump and if they root somewhere you can just let that be i'm i don't know if it will or not because i'm you know if it does take on then it will be another one hope and you can just let that be and then continue on so but we'll see if it does i'm not sure sometimes ground covers do it but for this climata i'm going to prune last year's growth completely because these ones are not going to produce anything now don't forget this one is a group three climata they're easy to grow and they don't produce on an old wood these are just the dead basically they're not going to do anything for you i'm going to remove them and then basically they come back fresh out of the ground every year so that's number three and i have rocks to keep it protected also this this area is going to be good for them because yes it is some but you can see the rose and the uh, magnolia tree are sheltering the roots i think it will be fine so now we need to go ahead and prune this uh, red star climata which is number belongs to number two group and this again number two groups are flowering on old food and also on new on a new growth so we'll start with the top I have a ladder here that we are going to use hope I don't fall um, so for this guy oh look it, I have snail that climbed all the way up there okay so here i think i'm just gonna remove this it looks like it might be dead may not be dead yeah this one is dead so and then you i'm not sure if george can get all of it but these are the tendrils it grows last year and then if you don't clear them up they just don't look good on clemata they just stay and then it produces more and it gets every year it uh um it gets more and more and more and then you end up with all this dead stuff on climata which is really not pretty i might take this one too 
this one looks bad. So they don't, it doesn't look clean and neat. If you don't do it, you will just end up with, with the mess. So it is really, I like doing it every year. Uh, every spring, I will clean up my climata. And it's actually kind of therapeutic for me. I like it. I don't, it doesn't bother me. It looks really pretty and fresh when I get it done. And then you can have your vines and you can redirect them the way you want them, have them, they would just look really pretty when it's done. So I, I will probably just clean all these tendrils for most part. Again, unless you want to contain the size and have that fit to your structure, um, you can then cut down the height as well. But I don't want to do that. Okay, so I'm finished pruning and you can see I've pruned all the dead tendrils. So basically after you prune them, it should look like that. Also, it's nice to prune them because uh, when all the new growth comes up, it will jumble up and will start um, wrapping itself around. Um, all the new growth will start wrapping itself around the dead tendrils and will just kind of become jumble of mess. So I like to get that all cleaned up first, uh, uh, immediately in the spring before it starts um, leafing out. And that way I can have it nice and clean. But at this point, see, you can see where you would like to direct them. Like I know this one is kind of falling like that. So I will just go ahead and know that this one needs to be directed like see this one i missed i need to no i didn't miss this one sometimes uh sometimes when it blooms and it's done you will see this is kind of what it look be look like but it's actually a stem that's why i left them it, that also needs to be pruned so see now i can redirect and then put a tie to it and this, these are the things i like to tie where it has a little wire some people don't like it because you know they're saying that it can break the stem because you know the clematis stems are very very fragile um and that it is possible from the wind but um it doesn't it hasn't been a problem for me let's just say and i like using these because they're easy to maneuver they're they're tiny they're very delicate so it's easy for me to uh, to use them, but you can use any any one that works for you, including there there are nowadays little velcros as well that you can push through, which works. It works for me, so I use it. But you can it, you can use whatever it works for you. So, but I did notice that here I have another stem that is kind of falling like that. See, it's been pruned already. I could prune a little farther in. Maybe I'll do that later. But um, so this one is kind of going nowhere. So what I'll do is um, I'll redirect them and just plant uh, secure them right here where you wanted it to go and that way 
it's uh, it will take its shape and it will um, go to the direction that you uh, initially would like to, you know would like them to go. So there they will be a little more controlled. And I twist this like that. So no problems there. Here we go. And I'd like them to go this way. There you have it. So this is how I deal with my clematis. I've had really good um, success with, with them, or doing it this way. Uh, some people like to just cut in half and let them do their thing. And some people say that uh, maybe it will give more strength to the vine. I mean, you can try different things and see honestly what works for me. It works this way and I like the, how it works you know, for me. But anyway, this is, this is kind of what I do. And then now at this point, we'll just go ahead and plant these other two clematis and then uh, we'll see what, how they will look after, in a garden after it's been planted. I forgot to show you this one clemata that I really, really like. Again, it's been planted here only two seasons. And um, this is a beautiful, beautiful clematis. Uh, you see it's already starting to form flower buds. This one called Henry. This is a white variety, one of my absolute favorite white ones, as I had them in my garden in Colorado too, and I absolutely adore this one. Just wanted to show you that. So I think this is where I would like to plant the clematis. I have to be really careful because there is a uh, internet line that goes through here. George will be really, really upset with me if I cut that. <laughs> Very upset. <laughs> so I have to be really careful. But about here where we want to plant. So I'm going to go slow, make sure I don't cut the line. I think there is a line right here where I found it. Okay, so I'm finished planting. It took me a little bit to carefully undo all the intertwined um, uh, stems uh, from one another and uh, try to um, reorganize uh, and uh, secure them over this obelisk and then I did uh, I decided to uh, leave the damp bamboo shoots right next uh, on each side of the obelisk I tied them because this obelisk doesn't seem like very strong and this will ha it, it helps to secure it a little more and then when the vine is already climbing and it's mature this is not going to go anywhere because it's going to be really strong that's not going to be a problem but in the meantime I secured them with these bamboos so I removed all the dead uh, tendrils and then also all the weak stems like I can show you in this container here and I still have you see all these weak uh, pieces I uh, trimmed uh, and left only uh, very uh, strong shoots so they are um, so, so it has a lot more strength and it's all healthy so um, we can go and I will show you where the other ones are planted now too. okay so this is where I planted our uh, Klimata ba uh, Batman so they are, it's white and has a little bit of a pink hint uh, o o over the petals. It's very, very beautiful. I'm really excited about this because this is our driveway. And if you can see like it's through here, I just watered the clematis. That's why it's sitting here. But if you can see how beautiful this area is, we have I planted hydrangeas last year over this wall and then uh, on this terrace. And then I, we have roses, uh, uh, David Aston roses, and some hybrid teas. 
um, so this will be filling in and looking pretty and then here I have three hydrangea paniculatas raspberry uh, that is planted here and I think this climber if it uh, climbs over this tree it will fill in and look really pretty and then I have a fence here I mean I can always um, spread them maybe around if necessary so and then um, this is our sand for the upper pergola area and uh, this is um, a viburnum tinas and it's beautiful this time of the year and it's it's so fragrant and beautiful so last year the, uh, i i uh, worked on this project because this area was just saturated with um, some um different bushes that was you know just found themselves here and then i trimmed the uh, bottom part of this uh, viburnum um so it, it trimmed on top and then this year look how gorgeous this looks oh i absolutely love how it looks and george maybe you can show it from on this side of the um of viburnum it looks so pretty uh here um and then um, here, I, I wanted to really quickly talk about this because this is a um, uh, Magnolia Felix that I, we, I planted last year, and I can't believe it has a bloom. Uh, this, this tree is supposed to have like 30 centimeter uh, uh, flowers. They're going to be so big, and it's still a very small tree, but you can see this body is already really, really big. I can't wait for this to really take off um, and, um, and have it show its flowers. I'm very excited. I have to show you guys when it blooms. And then this is a David Austin rose. As you can see, it's James, Al Gall James Galloway. Um, I planted this last year and it's doing really good. You guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm sorry it was so long because it took me forever to talk about clematis. If you have uh, any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me, to write me, to ask me questions. Um, and uh, I, you know, if anything that wasn't very clear, please let me know and I'll uh, clarify them for you. I oh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to my videos if you liked them. And um, uh, I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.